This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Coming up on the South Today, the police seek help from the public to identify the rightful owners of recently recovered stolen property. Otago's film industry marks a milestone and it's not just up-and-coming filmmakers that are benefiting. And an antiques roadshow is planned to raise funds for a communal house that wants to change the way it runs. Good evening, I'm Rebecca Dupree. Dunedin police are hoping a public appeal can help return a number of recently stolen items to their rightful owners. Officers apprehended a man with the loot last month. And while he's now before the courts, the owners of some goods remain outstanding. Is any of this property yours? It's believed to have been stolen in Dunedin between July and August this year. Police are looking to get these things back to the rightful owners after apprehending a man with the loot. He's now before the courts on theft charges. Um, as a result of that arrest, we recovered a large amount of property. We've been able to return some of that to the rightful owners, but we still have a number of items that are outstanding. We would ask people to look over these items and see if they can recognise whether or not they belong to them or they belong to one of their friends or family. Senior Sergeant Butterfield says some of the pieces are quite rare or unique or have recognisable features. He's hoping that'll help people in identifying their gear. He says there are ways people can protect their property that also assist police in the process of returning stolen items. We would suggest that if people do have items of value, that they refer to the SNAP website and log their property and serial numbers with the police. So in the event, unlikely event that they are taken, we're able to return them to them very quickly. Pocket watches, commemorative coins, cameras, wallets and a distinctive Cambodian lighter are among the items police are trying to return to owners. They say the alleged offender, a 26-year-old man, is due to appear in the Dunedin District Court on October the 13th in relation to theft and burglary charges. Darrell Baser, The South Today. Voting papers for the local body elections will start being delivered to mailboxes from tomorrow. Thousands of papers are ready and waiting at the New Zealand Post Centre in Strathallan Street, Dunedin. Staff will be delivering them throughout the wider city area from tomorrow. They must be mailed back in time to be received by noon on Election Day, which is Saturday the 8th of October. Those who haven't received voting papers by the 22nd of September can cast a special vote. All councils around the region are subject to election. Otago's film industry is marking a milestone as a new batch of local works are prepared for production. It's the 10th year of operation for short film Otago, which helps budding filmmakers launch their creativity. But the region's script writers aren't the only ones benefiting. Getting camera ready. The local film industry is chugging along nicely, thanks in part to a decade of support from short film Otago. The organisation started in 2006 and is funded by the Otago Community Trust. And to date we have produced 12 short films in the Otago region and we have two more in production, another with a provisional funding offer and we have four scripts that are about to go into script development. Each year the organisation puts a call out to writers across the region for scripts. Submitted works are blind judged and a select few are approved for production. SFO gives each successful writer up to $10,000, ultimately aiming to foster creativity within the film sector locally. And we expect the filmmakers to spend about $10,000. Um, we don't let people bring in much extra money, um, so we are looking for filmmakers who have a plan to make a credible, convincing, compelling film on that budget. He says despite financial restrictions, the quality of scripts and production goes up every year. Broken is among the latest crop recently premiered in Dunedin. Writer and director Scott Mowat says $10,000 isn't enough to fund a short film entirely, but the scheme works well. There's a lot of people in town that have skills and equipment that you can borrow uh, and that they're happy to lend. And with those sort of partnerships, you can produce short films. 
His work centres around an old man who's tormented by the memory of his abusive father and confronts his past to make good on a 50-year promise. It's all shot um, just outside Gore on a hunting estate and at Nichols Creek uh, up in Dunedin, which all somehow fit nicely into the Fiordland scenario. SFO estimates that every dollar it invests in the community unlocks between five and ten dollars of in-kind support for Otago filmmakers. Another two or three projects are expected to go into production later this year. Rosie Mannins, The South Today. The manager of a Dunedin store is taking stock after finding a large window was smashed overnight. Police were at the Dunedin Peaches and Cream franchise dusting mannequins for prints this morning. Broken plate glass littered the shop's entrance as the forensic officer worked to gather evidence. Auckland-based Peaches and Cream General Manager Matt Bathgate says not much was stolen in the smash and grab, but he's annoyed by the incident, saying the window will be expensive to replace, although it is insured. He says staff will be going through in-store security camera footage. Dunedin's Abbey Field communal house, for those 55 years and older, is looking to change the way it operates. Managers are needing to raise $100,000 to drive the changes, and they're planning an antiques roadshow event to generate revenue. Showing, telling, and hoping to raise a lot of money. The Abbey Field community is planning a change, from people buying units to simply renting them. The facility has been operating in Dunedin for a decade and staff say it's time for a change. To convert Abbeyfield from an owner-occupied model to a completely rental model and in that process to make sure that we can bring the rent down to a much more affordable level for everyone in the city. She says the move reflects the country's changing economic climate and staff are hoping to effect change themselves by reducing the cost of living on site. There's a lot of people in the city who can't actually afford to go into retirement villages. Lots of people, as we know, don't own their own home these days. Or even if they do, they mightn't have enough equity in their house to go into a retirement village. Or they actually might just want the small scale of what we actually offer at every field. One of the major ways the team is trying to do this is through an inaugural Antiques Roadshow style event. Yeah. Staff are now calling for donations of sellable items to go under the hammer. It's the first time we've done an Antiques Roadshow and we've invented the event. It's a wee bit of an extension of the Antiques Roadshow idea because we've added an auction element to it as well. She says the home's already accepted a raft of curios to be auctioned, including an Australian 1981 Magnum of Cabernet Sauvignon, a couple of clocks, among a host of artworks. Malcolm says staff are hoping to raise $10,000 on auction night next month. She says that'll boost the $30,000 already banked from grants and donations. Daryl Beza, The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, we meet another of Dunedin's mayoral candidates. Hi, my name is Ronald Fong. I believe that together we can build a brighter future for Dunedin. I'm presenting two major infrastructure proposals that won't cost the ratepayer a single cent. The first is a flood protection scheme for South Dunedin based on successfully used displacement tank systems overseas. The second is a major new redevelopment of our harborside area to create a world-class community space. Vote 104 and let's build a brighter future together. Thank you. Hi, I'm Doug Hall. I stood for council in the 2013 election and got elected. The achievements I've been part of in the last three years have been of a great benefit to the city. I'm reducing debt, improving contracts and better liaison with the general public. To further reduce debt and better management of all contracts, vote Doug Hall first choice for council. Silverhorns Collagen Plus naturally supports your collagen levels, giving you younger, firmer looking skin, healthier, shinier hair and stronger nails. Be quick, buy one now and get a second pack half price. Call 0800 502 402. We need your help to rebuild our animal centre urgently. Please give a little today.
When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489-2274. Hi, I'm Dave Cole, Mayor of Dunedin, and together we're building a great city. Not just for now, but for the future. And I'm committed to creating a positive legacy of sensible investments, sustainable businesses, an emphasis on infrastructure and environment, healthier homes, and your community well-being. A future our kids can be really proud to inherit. If you want the same positive future, please mark one for Dave Cull for Mayor and return your voting form. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dave Yardley and I'm standing for the Otago Regional Council. Two of Otago's greatest resources are our outstanding natural landscape and our capability for agriculture. Getting the balance right between preservation of that landscape and intensification of farming is a real challenge. To meet that challenge, we need a firm understanding of both our environment and our land-based businesses. I have that understanding to ensure that our landscape and farming can coexist in harmony for generations to come. A vote for Dave Yardley is a vote for reason, balance and integrity. Hello, my name is Anne Galloway and I'm standing for election to Dunedin City Council. I have lived and worked in Dunedin for 20 years and I'm very proud of this city. And I do know that our times there are very difficult decisions that need to be made. We need councillors who care, who care about the people, about their issues such as health care, housing and an ageing population. Vote for me and I will do my best for you and for Dunedin. Welcome back and we now continue our interviews of Dunedin's mayoral candidates and we're joined by Andrew Wiley. Good evening. Good evening. Andrew, how long have you lived in Dunedin? Um, my family and I moved here in 2003, um, but uh, I was born and raised in Wellington. And mm -hmm. How and uh, why are you running for the mayoralty? Well, basically, when we arrived here in 2003, um, we looked at the city and we thought we'll be here for two or three years and then we'd move on. But we fell in love with the city, and it's you know it's a great city. There's so many opportunities here, and uh, you know we've got all the ingredients there, but we're not quite putting it together. Okay, what sort of leadership experience can you bring to the table? Well, I've been a city councillor now for the last three years. Uh, that was a huge learning curve, and it's a big challenge. Uh, from there, you know, being a golf professional at a golf club, you're dealing with 500 people. You quickly learn how to deal with a lot of people, listen, engage, and good leadership is a lot about that. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the top two issues currently facing the city? Well, I look at jobs as being really, really important. Uh, it's telling the story about why people should move to Dunedin, invest in Dunedin, start their businesses in Dunedin, and that's a big part of it. You know, everybody, we want to focus on South Dunedin, uh, and that is a big, big issue. But really, the infrastructure has now been looked after, and we've got to do some investment down the line. Uh, but I think the next key uh, important issue for, for me is the hospital. That is really, really important. That is really going to be where we are on the map as a city. We lose teaching medical school accreditation. That changes a lot of things dynamically. My family and I moved here partly because of that type of hospital in town. And you will lose, see a lot of professionals, a lot of um, the faculty from the university will disappear. and. We underplay that and we've actually under uh, engaged with Wellington and central government and really uh, focus that one through. But that's, to me, the hospital is a major. What do you consider to be the core functions of the DCC? Well, obviously it's the services. It's the, you know, whether it's regulatory, it's um, the infrastructure, you know, it's what bring comes to your gate, you know, getting your rubbish taken out, things like that. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really all of that. It's the services. But, and it engages everybody. You know, everybody has a relationship with the DCC in some way, and that's the important part. Mm. How do you think the current council is performing? Well, I think we've... Uh, let's start with council staff. You know what? The staff are absolutely fabulous. They're underappreciated. Uh, and, God, they work tirelessly for the city. When you then look at what we've achieved in the last three years, the staff, you know, Grant McKenzie, who is the CFO, did an awesome job. Uh, and managing and bringing a lot of things together. Uh, the finances are better than we expected, but I think we left a lot on the table. You know, there's so much more to be done. We lost focus in some of the other areas. What would you do differently if you were mayor? Well, I think the key thing being is 
when you think about what is a good mayor, you know, you go through your head and say, you know, who are the good mayors? Who, who are the mayors you've really seen are being important? You know, they've all stood up, they've engaged, they've been out there, they've been active. And that's the type of mayor that I want to be. You've got to also listen, and be, but you've also got to really see what's important from the community. So you're talking to the wealthiest people, you're talking to the poorest people, you're talking to the youngest and you're talking to the oldest. It's the 360 degree approach. You've got to take it all in. The, one of the things that I learned uh, in Saddle Hill Community Board was that it's amazing how many things you learn at the morning teas, the community meetings, things like that. But yet we didn't see the mayor turn up to those events. We didn't see him engaging at that level. And, I, and I, to be honest, that's the type of mayor that I'd want to be. You know, it's really important to always be engaging with people. So then what would you say is the most important function of the mayor? Well, be present. Be up front, stand up and front up, to be honest. Mm -hmm. When you look at South Dunedin, did South Dunedin see the mayor on a regular basis? Did he engage? Did, was he there talking with the community? That to me, you know, Bob Parker, I thought, is really what pe some people look at as being a mayor that really stood up when a crisis happened. That to me is a role of the mayor. You're there for the good times, you're there for the bad times, but you're there for the community. Do you have the skills to lead the council? Well, nobody does. You know what, to be honest, anybody who says, yes, I've got all those skills, nobody knows until they get into that role. Um, do I have the skills to do the job? Yes. It's a, the challenge is going to be, I'll, bring, I'll do the job my way, not Dave's way, not as some of the other the mayors have. And I think, yes, I do have that ability. Again, I go back to my days as a golf professional. You're working at a golf club of 500, 600 plus people. It's a mini town. Everybody's got issues. Everybody's got to be heard. Everybody's got to be engaged with. And that's what it's about. But I've got, you know, the other part is, you know what, I've employed people. I've run a business. I've run businesses. You know, it's, it's also looking after all the other issues. Of, you know, it's balancing the dollars, building a team. You know, you're coaching people. You're working with people. Where does Dunedin's future lie? Number one, I think it's in our lifestyle. You know, when you talk about it, everybody that's moved to Dunedin, they go, wow, what a great city. Never thought this was here. Never thought that was there. And I think that's a really big part of it. The other one, if I'm looking at where we've got to be in three, five, ten years' time, the two areas I really see is the tech industry is really going to take off. Gigatown, we still have some opportunities there, but we're also attracting some smart minds in that area. This morning's paper highlighted that story with Rocketworks. Five staff, April last year. Now at 28, they'll have 35 by Christmas, potentially up to 150. They're one of quite a few companies in town with that sort of growth. I also look at niche manufacturing. When you go around and talk to the people in the industrial area, and you see what they're doing. You know, they're doing some amazing big projects, but they're amazing little projects. And the minds and the technologies we have in the city, that's where we'll excel. Mm. What do you love about Dunedin? You know what, it has to go back to the lifestyle. Mm. I love the fact that you could actually leave work, you know, at 5.15, pick up your family, and you can be at the park, you know, having fish and chips. You know, you can leave work at 5.15, go home, get your golf clubs, be on the first tee at a golf course. Mm. You know, it's all those sorts of things. And that's our, t that's our selling point. You talk to the people in Auckland, and what do they hate about Auckland? It's been living in the cars, you know, an hour, hour and a half each way. My wife tells a story that when we arrived in Dunedin, and somebody asked her when we went back to Vancouver for a visit, they said, will you come back? And she goes, no. I said, I love Dunedin. She goes, why? They said, we bought time. We found the time as a family, and I think that's the story we haven't told. You know, again, it's hospital, it's education, it's that whole environment. Why should we vote for you? Well, I've got to focus on really building on Dunedin as a lifestyle. It's all about making us one of the great cities in the world. We're not going to be the biggest city in the world. We're not going to be the smartest city in the world. We're just going to be a great city, but we're also going to be a great city to you know have a family, buy a home, have a lifestyle and retire. And I think that's really important to me and that's the vision I want to put out there. Dunedin City Council Mayoral Candidate Andrew Wiley, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. After the break on the South today, we'll take a look at weather for the end of the working week.
Silverhorns Collagen Plus naturally supports your collagen levels, giving you younger, firmer-looking skin, healthier, shinier hair and stronger nails. Be quick, buy one now and get a second pack half price. Call 0800 502 402. Hello, my name is Anne Galloway and I'm standing for election to Dunedin City Council. I have lived and worked in Dunedin for 20 years and I'm very proud of this city. And I do know that our times there are very difficult decisions that need to be made. We need councillors who care, who care about the people, about their issues such as health care, housing and an ageing population. Vote for me and I will do my best for you and for Dunedin. Hi, my name is 104. I believe that together we can build a brighter future for Dunedin. I'm presenting two major infrastructure proposals that won't cost the ratepayer a single cent. The first is a flood protection scheme for South Dunedin based on successfully used displacement tank systems overseas. The second is a major new redevelopment of our harborside area to create a world-class community space. Vote 104 and let's build a brighter future together. Thank you. We need your help to rebuild our animal centre urgently. Please give a little today. Pregnant? need to talk 24 hours a day seven days a week pregnancy counseling services are here to help it's free it's confidential call us now on 0800 773 462 I'm Dave Cole, Mayor of Dunedin, and together we're building a great city, not just for now, but for the future. And I'm committed to creating a positive legacy of sensible investments, sustainable businesses, an emphasis on infrastructure and environment, healthier homes, and your community wellbeing. A future our kids can be really proud to inherit. If you want the same positive future, please mark one for Dave Cole for Mayor and return your voting form. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dave Yardley and I'm standing for the Otago Regional Council. Two of Otago's greatest resources are our outstanding natural landscape and our capability for agriculture. Getting the balance right between preservation of that landscape and intensification of farming is a real challenge. To meet that challenge, we need a firm understanding of both our environment and our land-based businesses. I have that understanding to ensure that our landscape and farming can coexist in harmony for generations to come. A vote for Dave Yardley is a vote for reason, balance and integrity. Hi, I'm Doug Hall. I stood for council in the 2013 election and got elected. The achievements I've been part of in the last three years have been of a great benefit to the Eden City. I'm reducing debt, improving contracts and better liaison with the general public. To further reduce debt and better management of all contracts. Vote Doug Hall, first choice for council. Welcome back and now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. Police are trying to return a range of stolen property to the rightful owners after it was recently recovered around North Dunedin. Short Film Otago is marking a decade of operation, helping budding filmmakers produce works and boosting the region's associated economy. And Dunedin's Abbey Field Communal House for the Elderly is raising $100,000 to change the way it's run. And it's time now for a look at tomorrow's weather. The South Today weather update proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Emu Oil. And here is today's southern view. It's taken of the Silver Stream in Mosgiel.
to the situation and a trough of low pressure is due over the South Island tomorrow. It's going to bring with it some fronts that will pass over Southland and Otago during the day. What that means, unfortunately, is a bit of the wet stuff around showers and westerlies for Balclutha, the, the Catlins, Gore and Lumsden, all on 13 degrees. Gusty westerlies for Tiana with squally showers and a high of 12. And strong nor'westers with some rain for both Omarama and Twizel tomorrow with highs of 15 degrees each. In Dunedin tonight, some rain with strong nor'westers and a low of 8. Tomorrow cloudy with some rain in the morning, breaking in the afternoon but returning in the evening. Fresh to gusty nor'west winds and a high of 14. And on Saturday, sunny periods with westerly winds and 13 degrees. And in Invercargill this evening, cloudy with some rain and strong nor'westers and an overnight low of 8. Tomorrow, again, cloudy with some rain, squally showers and gusty southwesters with 12 degrees. And on Saturday, showers easing with fresh southwesters developing at a high of 11. And that's all from the team here at the South today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.